Hey everyone, Cloud Chief here, back to another video for today. So on Thursday, Square will report Q4 earnings. As always, I like to do a little preview video for that. I did the same for Lemonade. If you're interested in that, it's gonna be in the top right corner. So what can you expect from this video? A little recap of what happened this quarter and then have a look at their past quarters, see what number should improve in this one. Obviously, we will discuss after pay and hopefully we'll get more information about that on Thursday. And we're also gonna have a look if Square will be added to this channel's portfolio on stockart.io. If you wanna follow that portfolio, you can find the link down in the description below. All right, so first up, we had here a month or so ago, Square announces official launch in Spain after successful early access programs. So we knew already that they were in Europe in a couple of countries. We knew already that they started a pilot program in Spain. So it's nice to see that, well, in January 25th, they announced that that program has become official. So they say here, starting today, which was a month ago, Spanish entrepreneurs will have access to Square's wide range of software, hardware, and payment solutions to help them start, run, and grow their businesses. This will include Square's point of sale and payment software and hardware to suit any business, Square for restaurants, Square appointments, Square register, Square terminal, and the reader, and then the e-commerce and online payments as well, Square Online, online checkout, virtual terminal, you name it. Basically everything but Cash App. I'm still waiting for Cash App to come to Europe. I know it's available, I think in the UK or Ireland, maybe even both, but there's basically zero value to that as of today. If you're from the UK or Ireland, please let me know down in the comments below what you think about Cash App right now that's available to you. What can you do with it? What can you not do with it? Because the only comments I got from it is basically you can do very little. So do let me know. But this move is another good one. It's not amazing. Square still has a long way to go in Europe. But that's also why Afterpay is here because Afterpay already has a strong presence outside of the United States. And that's where this announcement came in. Obviously, at the end of January, Square sellers can now offer buy now, pay later through Afterpay. I think I saw a couple of tweets already with people getting emails the day after this was announced that they can now offer Afterpay as a buy now, pay later option. So that's great. Maybe we'll hear something, some early results on Thursday. And last announcement is this one on February 16th. Tidal is now available in the United Arab Emirates. You know my view on Tidal. I really don't see why they acquired it. Like I know they want maybe to go the NFT route and help music artists, etc. But then again, this isn't a charity. You know my view on Jack, I still feel he needs to be replaced as CEO of Square, Block. If he wants to do some amazing blockchain work, things that they give out for free, whatever, he can do that as a charity, not as a publicly traded company. So those were all the announcements you might have missed this past couple of weeks. Now, before I continue with this video, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. All right. So first up, let's see how Block is actually performing. We're here on stockcard.io. Let's see if this will be added to our portfolio or not. Little disclaimer, I already added it a while ago, but I would like to average down and buy the dip, let's say, even though it's not really a dip anymore. It's more like a crash, a 40% crash year to date. But if you look at this right here, the analyst price target is $230. Right now we're a little bit under $100. So the upside here is pretty real. Obviously, a lot of analysts will update their price target after this quarter, but as of now, pretty good upside. And even if they lower it to 200, maybe a little bit below that, still great upside and you get a great company. 25 analysts have a buy rating, 10 hold and only one sell. Now I'm jumping straight to this one right here. This is the investment strategy. This is only available to VIP members. If you want to upgrade, do use code COUCHINVESTOR. Link is also down in the description. So they say here, good for buy and hold portfolio. Basically, this is the type of investment strategy everybody 
everybody should have. A buy and hold, not a buy and trade or a buy and sell because the price sentiment has gone down. If you're a trader, fine. That's another game plan. But for Square, this is a good one. Bad for a growth portfolio. This is based on a couple of metrics here. Basically, the past investment returns are bad because, well, if you look at the one year, two year, three year chart, it hasn't really grown that much. And that's because, well, the pandemic pushed it higher, extremely high, and now we crashed. So there's that. Sentiment is bad, but sentiment being bad is not always that bad because we all know that these indicators tell us that there is a lot of fear. So maybe it's now time to be greedy. Just putting it out there. Also, if you want to know more information here, it has a P ratio of 91.31. Yes, that's extremely high. But then again, I don't really know if we should be looking at the P ratio for square today in the future 100%. I like to look a bit more at the price to sales ratio right now, which is low, 3.12. I think it was, it's still lower than SoFi. So to me, pretty good opportunity. So will we add it to the portfolio? Most likely, yes. So I'm going to buy 11 shares at today's price. Actually, yesterday's price, even though the market is closed, it will probably update when the market opens. And then the reason for decision, I always like to put the link to the video. And again, if you want to follow this channel's portfolio, all you have to do is click the link in the description. It's free to join, so why not? All right, now let's jump into the numbers real quick and see what we might expect. So first up, gross profit grew 43% year over year to $1.13 billion. It's down quarter over quarter, but fine. On the two-year CAGR, it's up 51%. Adjusted EBITDA is positive. 233 million up 28 percent seller gross profit which i expected to continue to grow now that everything is reopening so that's great on the two-year CAGR 29 percent year-over-year growth 48 percent cash out gross profit is one that might take another hit i don't know but it might it's already done quarter over quarter on the two-year CAGR it's actually still up triple digits 104 percent but keep an eye on this one right here, you already know my opinion on the fact that you can only buy and trade Bitcoin on Cash App. It would have been much better if they added Ethereum. You don't need to add everything, but add the popular coins, not the crap coins. The popular one, I don't know, Cardano, Ripple, Ethereum would already been a good start. And that might improve, first of all, the users that use Cash App. Because right now, if you want to use Cash App just for crypto, there's just Bitcoin. So why would you use Cash App? Maybe you want to use another app that offers various cryptocurrencies. And seller GPV mixed by seller side, expected to continue to grow quite nicely. As I said, everything is reopening. So the seller side will definitely drive this business up. And now with Afterpay, this will certainly get a boost. Total net revenue was $3.84 billion in the quarter, up 27% year over year, excluding Bitcoin. Total net revenue in the third quarter was $2.03 billion, up 45% year over year. Again, yes, with revenue, Bitcoin is obviously helping. But if you look at this right here, as always, gross profit for Bitcoin is very, very small. It's just $42 million, or approximately 2% of Bitcoin's revenue. So not that much. And lastly, the forward-looking commentary they gave us for last quarter with regards to October, so one of the months already in this one. So in October, they expect seller to deliver strong gross profit year over year. And on a two-year CAGR basis, seller GPV is expected to be up 42% year over year in October. And two-year CAGR is expected to be up 24%, a slight improvement to 23% in Q3. And as for the Cash App ecosystem, in October, they expect Cash App to deliver strong gross profit growth year over year and on a two-year CAGR basis, driven by growth in monthly actives, engagement across our ecosystem, and inflows into Cash App. Let's see what happens. All right, so what do I expect for this quarter? Basically, strong continued growth on the seller side of the business, good performance from Cash App. I would like to see the numbers of the monthly active users again, in the report because we don't really get that each and every quarter which is a shame i do want to know more about afterpay we're probably going to get a lot of information about afterpay since well now it's the first time they're officially 
merged. So I'm going to be looking for some details there. I'm sure they're going to talk about that during the earnings call as well. So there you have it. Do share your thoughts on this upcoming quarter. What do you expect from Block? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, take care, stay safe, and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.